Hey, welcome to the Healthful Woman Podcast. Today's Monday, November 23rd, 2020. Today's the second podcast in our mini series on breastfeeding. I hope you enjoyed hearing Melka's perspective last week. In today's podcast, I'm joined by Melissa Kotlin to discuss breastfeeding, the role of a lactation consultant. Melissa is a board certified lactation consultant and has been helping women with breastfeeding for the past 17 years. She is also a registered nurse and recently started working as a labor and delivery nurse at Mount Sinai. So we get to work together. Spoiler alert, Melissa was also Melka's lactation consultant. Today, Melissa and I discuss how she became a lactation consultant and what exactly do they do. We spend a lot of time discussing how much of lactation consulting is help with technique versus overall support and encouragement. I think you may be surprised to hear those percentages. One of the reasons I really appreciate Melissa's insight is her philosophy of looking at the overall wellness of the mother and not just being task focused on the feeding itself. In the same regard, we discuss why some lactation consultants get a bad rap. Our second podcast this week will drop on Wednesday, so you don't have to worry about waking up super early on Thanksgiving morning to hear the podcast before all your friends do. Melissa will be my guest again on Wednesday, and I'm sure you will love both of these podcasts. Thanks for listening. Have a great day. Welcome to today's episode of Healthful Woman a podcast designed to explore topics in women's health at all stages of life. I'm your host, Dr. Nathan Fox, an OBGYN and maternal fetal medicine specialist practicing in New York City. At Healthful Woman, I speak with leaders in the field to help you learn more about women's health, pregnancy, and wellness. All right, I'm here with Melissa Kotlin, who is a nurse, a registered nurse. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, Working on the labor floor at Mount Sinai at nights, but also a lactation consultant for the past 17 years. I am. Fantastic. Seems like minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for coming on. It's so great to have you. So happy uh, to be In our here. little chit chat, we also just learned that our daughters are actually classmates at Barnard. Crazy. Together. So we're going to have to figure that one out. Uh, though it's, I guess, now virtual classmates. They're, they would only see each other on a, a Zoom session, I imagine. But, but they could still be best friends. You never know. <laughs> I, we have no idea. We'll find out. We will find Zoom out. Zoom besties. We're going to talk today mostly about breastfeeding, although who knows where it'll take us. Sure thing. And just so our listeners understand, tell us your story. Like, you know, where are you from? How'd you get into lactation consulting and to nursing? I breastfed my first baby back in 1997. I was the first of all my friends to have have a baby. So I had no one to tell me the ropes other than my mother. Mm-hmm. Who probably breast us, breastfed us for three weeks. Okay. Um, but... <laughs> while, while she was smoking. <laughs> no, I think, I think my the baby nurse that took care of me, apparently there are pictures of her with a cigarette. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing we um, all survived childhood. Yeah. <laughs> and no car seats. Yeah. Uh, nothing in the front seat. Yeah. Her arms coming home. Right. With no seatbelt. <laughs> None. Yeah. <laughs> and so I breastfed my first baby just sort of blindly. I had taken a class actually at Mount Sinai, but I probably didn't remember anything. Did you deliver at Mount Sinai? I did. I did. Really? Who delivered you? Becky Brightman delivered two of mine. Yep. Oh, well, Becky Brightman's a wonderful OBGYN. The best ever. I always laugh at the old ladies who sit in there, you know, and I'm like, why are old ladies going to this uh, this practice? And then I realize I am that old yeah. lady now. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not giving up. It's like at the it's like at the family party if you're like, I don't know who the weird cousin is. It's you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I kind of breastfed him blindly for the first year. And then I had another friend who had a baby. And then she was always asking me lay questions about breastfeeding. And by the time I had had my second, she said to me, you know, I feel like I wouldn't have breastfed for so long if you hadn't supported me and told me what to do. And I was probably telling her the wrong information too, just whatever worked for me. I didn't know anything. She said, I really feel like you should look into this and Mm -hmm. maybe go into it. And I wasn't working at the time. And for fun, without Google or anything like that way back then, I just started to call around and I called Mount Sinai to see, because I knew they had lactation consultants to see if maybe they had a course I could take or a Mm -hmm. program. And they did. And I was the only non-RN in the seven-week didactic course that we had to take. And then it took me two years of sending paperwork down to a woman in North Carolina who would sign off on my you know, experiences. So I, had, I did two years of clinical work at Mount Sinai to become a board certified lactation consultant. When you say that you were the only non-RN, meaning everyone else to her taking it was actually a nurse, was this because these are nurses who are working like in postpartum or labor yep. and delivery and needed to know this information or they wanted to get extra I think they wanted the training extra, or certification. Yeah, the certification especially this was in 2000 mm-hmm. it was 
it was it was becoming kind of hot. Lactation consultants were sort of, you know, this was like the profession to start to go into. It's become even hotter now. I think that they were just adding on their certifications to their or already existing, right. you know, our land license NPs. And it was very easy for them to do because they just had to sort of, you know, log particular hours with breastfeeding moms and then take the board exam. But I had to see about 500 different things that I had to sign off on paper right. <laughs> and do before I could even sit for the exam. Is the requirements to get certified similar now to what it was then? I think there are more pathways now, depending on your background. Right. And so I'm not quite sure, actually. Right. So when you did those, you said it was seven weeks of just like of just like coursework, cor of coursework. And yeah. now they have these comprehensive weekend long classes right. that you right. could do, which, right. um, which are great. And you can even do them online. But back then you showed up. And then yeah. it was two years of it was two years clinical of clinical experience. Exactly. Basically. And that's and that's you have to shadow another lactation consultant, essentially, like yeah. work with her. Yeah. So essentially you start out observing for for a certain period of time, then they go in with you and work with you on certain skills. And then they send you in to watch over right. you while right. you're doing it. And then they say, okay, go see this patient. And then I will check right. in later to make sure that everything is okay. Right. And then they sort of signed off on you. But it was everything. I had to see babies in the NICU. Sometimes it was tough to find certain babies, like babies with Down syndrome. There aren't a lot. It was hard to sort of wait around until right. one was born that was going to attempt to breastfeed, like there was a lot to do and a lot to check off that just wasn't possible at a certain point. Every Friday I would have a meeting with my one woman in North Carolina and I had to FedEx my my little reports right. down there because there was nothing online. Right. So now I think it's a lot right. easier. For right. And so, and so it's sort of like that's the whatever American or international board of. So I'm an IBCLC. So I'm an international board certified lactation consultant. IBCLC. So, okay. And that was through the international board of lactation consultant examiners that I had to. It was crazy. Talk. Right. <laughs> and when you were doing it in 2000, was this, and you said it was the hot thing, was this certification board certification, something that was new or had it existed for a long time, but maybe fewer people did it? So I think that the designation started in the 80s, but breastfeeding was, you know, that was when breastfeeding just sort of, we were learning more and more about all the benefits. And, and again, even though, you know, maybe our mothers did it way back in, mm -hmm. you know, 1970, there's just so much more research on all of these benefits now. Right. It didn't exist in the 80s. Like, right. they were like, well, yeah, we know it's good. We know it's good for you, but not what we know now. And so I think as the years have, have gone on, we've learned so much more. Every day we learn more and more. Is most of the training or the didactics, is it physiology and anatomy Everything. and benefits? Or is it more like these are the tricks of the trade? Everything. So it started off with the physiology uh -huh. of the breast. Uh -huh. That was like an entire day of just right. the boob. <laughs> right. <laughs> and then really went into sort of the production of milk and right. then went into latching techniques. And we went into all, you know, the troubleshooting of all the different issues that can come up, brush and mastitis and engorgement and all these very common issues that moms right. run into, they always feel like they're alone and they're the only one that went through it. So right. this is where we step in. But it's right. also but it's also learning about just the just a little bit of, you know, compassion. We sure. Talking earlier, yeah. just compassion, understanding that moms think they come into labor and delivery and, and having the background in both is interesting for me because they come in and they think that, oh, my God, the labor or even a C-section, this is the hardest part of of this entire thing. Oh, no. And then we're like, no, you know what? That's that's nothing. Right. We realize like Try now I have to kid. exactly yeah. <laughs> now I have to sustain this baby. Right. On, you know, if I'm choosing to breastfeed, again, no pressure, but if I'm choosing to breastfeed, right. then now I actually have to sustain her, yeah. you know, or him with through yeah. just this. This is this is ongoing. Like right. the labor, the, the the delivery, the recovery, that's sort of over. That's nothing. It's a piece of cake. Right. But I got to get this kid into college. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> it's no, it's, it's, it is, I think that, uh, and I say that a lot with, you know, when I'm talking to, uh, to women, to my patients and they'll say, oh, you know, when this, when we get to the delivery, because uh, frequently if I'm taking care of them, they're having difficult pregnancies, not because I'm a bad doctor, but because, uh, you know, all right, all right. <laughs> hopefully everyone did. understands what I meant by that. But, and they'll say, oh, I, you know, finally, well, the finish line when I deliver, I'd be like, it's actually nah. the starting line, you know, that's, we'll get you to the starting line, but then, you know, it you have to begins. raise this kid. And so one of the things that you said, and I think that it actually ties to what you said before about when you helped your friend and that you said that you didn't really know anything other than your own experience, but just sort of being supportive. And I was curious, how much of 
lactation consulting is technical, meaning, oh, you're doing this wrong, do this better, you can do it differently, here's how I'm gonna help you, versus just, I'm here to support you, this is hard, we're gonna make it easier, it's okay, like that type of difference, I guess, maybe between like coaching yeah. and teaching, like uh, how much of it is is each of those? Oh my God, I would say it's 80-20. It's 80-20 with the, su- the just psychology support. of it. Yeah. Exactly. Which is why you're so helpful to your friend, even though you claim you didn't I didn't, anything. I didn't feel like I did anything. Yeah. I feel like I walk out of so many of my private consultations with moms who are in, they say they're in dire straits when they call me. They're telling me they have all of these issues. And let's say it's a latch issue. Mm-hmm. Baby's not latching. Baby's not latching. I, I'm about to hang this up. Okay, fine. I make my visit. I sometimes don't do anything other than just reposition her hand. Right. <laughs> Baby latches, has a beautiful feeding. Wait, she's never done this before. When it, I'm like, I didn't do anything. Like we sat and talked for a little while beforehand, calm her down. A lot of it is just knowing that my body is physically there right, and right. Th- knowing what I do is what I do and that they have the support, the ongoing support. I always offer, you know, part of what I give to them because mainly what I am doing is just doing private consults because in the hospital, I'm sort of latching them quickly. And that's right. the end is I always say to them, you have un- you have me for unlimited phone calls, texts, FaceTimes, whatever it is for, for the duration of this baby's breastfeeding experience, right. because it doesn't just end when I walk out the door. It's too hard. So for them to know that they can just call me or text me or email me or FaceTime me at any point and know that, that I'm there for them, it helps them to succeed because you're just not giving up. Part of what people always say, oh, sort of, you know, what sets you apart? I'm like, from the very beginning, from 17 years ago, when I started this, I was like, I'm a lactation consultant, but I want to be like the friend that just happens to know a lot about breastfeeding that they can call. And while I keep forgetting that I'm getting older, I keep thinking I'm still in my 30s. (laughs) Like, I'm like, oh, we're, we're, we're peers. Right. (laughs) You know, I'm not, I'm like their mother now. (laughs) But it's the psychological part of it. The support is huge. Yeah, sure. I mean, they really do have issues, but the latch issues, which are the majority of when I get those phone calls, are usually just something so small that we can tweak. But even when they've gone through milk supply issues and an awful bout of mastitis or thrush, any of these issues, we fix them. And then just knowing, okay, this is normal. This is how many moms go through this. When they hear me say, I get this phone call every single day, it takes them down a level. They're like, okay, wait a minute. I'm not alone here. And I always tell them they cannot Google anything because, <laughs> oh my God, it makes me crazy. They're going to hear a million different stories. And also I tell them not to call their friends about things too, because it's always going to be, you know, the frustration of different levels of advice really starts to play with their heads a little bit. And even in the hospital, the the frustration of, oh, but the nurse told me to do this, but then the pediatrician told me to do this. My OB told me to do this. Then I saw a lactation consultant, but she said that, you know, it makes their heads swim. Yeah. They've got so much to sort of unpack. They just had a baby, whether it's their first or their 10th, there's still so much for them to sort of wrap their heads around. And when you get different types of advice from so many different people. It's just so overwhelming. Yeah. So there, there's so much you just said there that's awesome. And we got to unpack all of that. Sure. sure. <laughs> so, for, but before we do that, just so everyone understands, because what you're saying is at the hospital, you just latch and they go. It's because you were first a lactation consultant and doing your private practice of lactation consulting and home visits and everything you're talking about. And then you went to get your degree yes. in nursing. Oh, yeah. And we RN. forgot to. Right. right. And, and, and now you work at Mount Sinai as a labor and delivery nurse. And so the reason you're not doing all of the breastfeeding, you know, teaching and helping is because after they deliver, you help them initially, but then they go to a different floor, exactly. they're on the postpartum floors, and you're not a part of that. Exactly. Um, at the hospital, there are other people who do that. Exactly. Uh, but you just, it's almost like coincidentally, you do lactation yeah. consulting. Yeah. And so you're very helpful right after birth, but that's not, okay, so yeah. just explain yeah. Yeah, how that and, process and, works. And yeah. especially, I had to wrap my head around that because I'm like, okay, step out of this role because there's so much to do after the delivery. Right. And I have to get them upstairs. A lot of times 
you know, when I say, are you breastfeeding the baby? Okay, let's latch the baby on. I love doing it, but I can't sit there and actually go through an entire console. And I start sometimes finding myself starting to chat a little bit like, okay, so let me give my little rundown of how big the baby's stomach is right now and how much milk it actually needs to feed. And yes, you have colostrum. And and then I'm right. like, oh, I don't actually have time for this. So let's latch the baby quickly. Let's position the baby. Boom. I miss that part. And I wish that they could hang with me a little bit longer on L&D. But I also trust that upstairs, you know, on postpartum, that if they're having any issues, they will see one of the lactation consultants there who can kind of go through it and have a little bit more time with them. But, you know, that yeah. is, it's a little bit of a bummer. And I have nurses call me in sometimes when they when they have a mom who's you know desperate to breastfeed, baby's having a little bit of latch. I could run in for two seconds, right. you know, latch them on and like, I'm so sorry, I have to get back to my patient. And, <laughs> you know, so that's the only sort of little bit of a bummer that but you're still doing the consulting the yeah, yeah, consulting. yeah yeah it's yeah and one of the other things you said which was it just struck me because i say the exact same thing when i'm talking to patients in ultrasound which is the line i have this conversation every day yeah when i when i'm trying to you know talk about things and and let people know that there's something i'm looking at and i'm talking about but i'm it's common and i'm not trying to freak them out and worry them i always say just so you know I have this conversation every day. This is the third time I've had it since lunch. And <laughs> so people are like, oh, okay, like I get it. And then I always say the same thing. I used to tell people don't go on Google, but I found that it's not successful because everyone's on do. Google. So I, <laughs> what I tell them is I pre-Google them. I say, okay. You can look at right. this site. I say, when you go on Google, right. you might find A, B, and C. And this is why it's not what I'm talking about. And if you get there, hit that back button, back button, back button, back button, and then go the other direction. Exactly. Here's where you need to go. And But the same thing, I'll say like, your friends are going to tell you something different. Everyone has a different experience. They may have a similar diagnosis, but it's not the same. It's, it's yeah. literally the same strategies because- like you said, people are, their heads are spinning because the information is so vast and it's so wide. There's just so many options if we don't tell them exactly what's going on. And so exactly. for you, you're saying, no, this is normal. Like yeah. everyone has this. Don't like, don't take this to a dark place. Exactly. And, yeah. and you see, you physically see their shoulders sort of drop when yeah. you say, this is what I see every day. Like there's a physical like, oh, Okay. I'm not so alone in this, even though I have mastitis and I feel horrible right now. I'm going to feel better. You, you promise you're going to feel fine. Thrush, yeah, it takes a little bit longer to get rid of, but you're going to be okay. And they, they sort of relax. And so I think it goes back to the point of just having someone say to you, this is normal. You have my support all the time. Lactation consultants, we've seen it in movies. We've seen it on TV. Like they, Sometimes they have a really nasty reputation of being like the nipple Nazis and all that. And it's, it's upsetting because we're not all like that. Right. To have somebody who you, you sort of feel like I can call at any time just to bring me down a level, just to say, in the, you know, of course, I work nights, so it's great because they can text me at three in the morning. And right. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> I'm up. I'm up. <laughs> so if I'm on break, then I can call you. Just to know that they have that. And, you know, I wish, of course, I wish the media would take the awfulness away. It's hard because some people focus too much. And I mean, with the lactation consultants, some of them are the ones who you're describing who maybe have given your field uh, a reputation it doesn't deserve. <laughs> I think it's just people who are very focused on the task. Like, yeah. all right, you, our goal is to get you to feed. You need to do A, B, C, yes. and D, and we're going to be very regimented. Yes. Whereas what you're describing is a much more like you're taking two steps back and you're looking at the overall you know, wellness, the overall like mother baby bond, the overall exactly. how is she doing situation. And so breastfeeding is obviously a big part of that. And that's the expertise you're bringing to the table. But it's not just that, right? It's the whole person and exactly. the whole unit of the mother and baby that you have to look at and what does she need at that time. And it's not necessarily specific instructions. It might be, exactly. but it's not necessarily that. Exactly. And also what you just said, when you're looking at the whole entire picture, I don't have a script. And I think the problem is there are many who sort of have their like laundry list of things that they that they are going to do. And clinically, that's what they're supposed to be doing. But everyone, there's no textbook answer for this mom to this mom to this mom. And I never go in saying, this. these are my expectations right. for you because this is what the AAP says. Or like I look, I ask them always what their goals are. Right. Sometimes the goal is to get out of the hospital and having breastfed three times. Right. Sometimes 
I have these moms who say, oh, I want to breastfeed through my next pregnancy. So I don't know when this is going to end. And I always sort of go back to the movie, but nobody ever remembers this. What Mm. about Bob with Mm -hmm. the baby steps? (laughs) Okay. Yeah. (laughs) Let's take it in baby steps. So let's get you out of the hospital first. Let's get you home. Then let's get to two weeks when we have that first growth spurt. Then let's, so when, when they're, when it's broken up, according again to whatever their goals are, we, we always talk about that first, you know, what are your goals? How long, what do you expect from this entire experience? And then I sort of formulate the plan from there. So you can't just go into it like, well, the AAP says that right. with breastfeed for six months exclusively and then up to a year or, you know, mutually agreeable. That's what they say. Right. But this mom, I'd also rather have a mom who's happy doing this right. than being stressed out because she's supposed to be and then have her you know, yeah. on antidepressants because she's feeling the stress of that. So you have to look at the whole picture and you have to just sort of make these goals, tailor your plan to what the mom wants. Right. And then the way that I end every conversation with all of my moms is this is fine for now. We, we can always tweak it. So call right. me if this isn't working, we tweak again and we tweak again. And I get these phone calls. Some moms, I hear from them every day for months. Some of them, I he, like I have my consult with them. And then three weeks later, they call me for a small question. And then I hear from them, you know, again in right. a year and they're ready to wean or or over that. Right. So it really depends. And when we we're talking just about sort of that reputation and the, you know, this is what you have to do. I think of there was a there's a show, I think it's on ABC, a, a Million Little Things, one of these friendship, you know, okay. 40s friendship kind of shows, like This Is Us or something. Right. And the season opener, I think of the second season, was that one of the women has a, a baby and there's a, an entire full on scene with a lactation consultant and she's yelling at the, oh. and the I was mortified <laughs> and I was like, I can't believe this is right. what they're making us look like. And I posted something, I think on Facebook about how disappointed I was. Like I may, might've tagged a million little things if I even did it right. <laughs> and there were a few clients of mine who were friends of mine on Facebook who said, this actually is accurate. Like I know this happens, it, this happened. And this is why we called you, you right. know, and I'm like, Oh, Oh, oh like, yeah. I'm trying not to have my head in the clouds about it, but it was an awful scene. Everybody should Google that scene yeah. because it'll come right up. <laughs> You're talking so, to gynecologists. We sometimes get things said <laughs> about it. Yeah. That. That's true. <laughs> so, so. You get it worse than I do. <laughs> yeah, and, and we, we, on TV, we're represented differently uh, from how life is. It's what we're talking about also points to a bigger, I don't say issue, but sort of a bigger topic, which is in general, after birth for a while, mental health of the mother is so critical. And it's also tenuous. There's so much going on at that time. And it's people really don't appreciate that. And by people, I don't mean like, oh, people don't have babies or their husbands or their friends. I mean, the women are about to get into this, right? They're pregnant and they don't realize, you know, what's going to happen after birth. And I think the, the, that picture perfect story you see on Facebook and Instagram of, you know, had my baby two weeks ago and I'm perfect and everything's great and my baby's beautiful and I look wonderful and then I, I lost all my weight and I'm yeah. gonna, and, and right, that happens for some people and God bless, that's Few awesome. But that between. is really, that's the exception. And it's very hard because, you know, you're physically recovering from delivery, which is not a piece of cake. Like that is hard to do and you're not sleeping well. And now you have all the stress over whether you're feeding or not. And it's not going well and your hormones are up and down. and all, you know, you you're, showered. You're, right. People aren't happy about, <laughs> obviously they, they gain weight in pregnancy and people want to lose it. And it's just a very difficult time for people. And it's incumbent about all of us to help them, yeah. you know, get through this, whether yeah. it's our friends, whether it's our family, whether it's our patients, whether it's people who you're coming to see, it's about the whole person and the whole unit and the whole family. It's just so critical and you can't divide it up into little pieces. And when people do, it ends up usually causing more problems than it fixes. I think it's exactly what happens with them. Yes. With the mean lactation consultants. Yeah. Yeah. Evil. <laughs> we actually had a bad experience when we were when we had our twins. Oh see? Yeah. <laughs> We, Maybe you called into the producers at a million little things. Yeah, it's, 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 you know, so, you know, my wife is trying to considering or hoping to breastfeed the twins, which is very difficult, really obviously. Tough. And just the, the people who were assigned to help us at the hospital were quite mean. Yeah. Um, to her, to me, they literally accused me of shaken baby syndrome because I was like rocking the baby. And I was like, I was a med <laughs> student. I, didn't tell, I was like, I was like, I, 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 I actually told them to get the 
out of the room. I said, <laughs> you're out. Goodbye. And it was crazy. But, you know, but then you see all the people now. They're wonderful. They're unbelievable. They're so helpful. They're so lovely. And I think, you know, occasionally, like anything, there's doctors who are terrible also. I mean, there's, yeah. there's a lot of people in a lot of fields that are awful, awful. and not kind. Yeah. But that's not the goal. And that's not who they mostly are. And right. I think that, you know, what you're describing is really what people are looking for. And you do have to find your fit. There are some women who love that sort of hardcore, give it to me, not give it to me straight, mm -hmm. but just right. tell me what to, I don't need the coddling. Tell me what to do. And that's fine for them. But the majority are not like right. that. the majority want they want their nonstop support. Right. And it's what's going to make them successful. It's great. Yeah. When you are working with the mom or a mom to be as a lactation consultants, when do you start? Is it during pregnancy? Is it always after birth? Is it depend on the situation? What's typical, number one? And number two, what's ideal if they're not the same? Ideally, I love it when moms call me and they just, you know, took a pregnancy test. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to see what how you work. I'm right. Like, call me at, you know, about seven months from right. now. But ideally, about eight weeks before their due date, I always recommend taking a prenatal breastfeeding class. Right. And while it might seem weird to not have the baby there and not be, and you're working sometimes with a doll and a fake breast, right. you know, just in, in practicing right. positioning and all that, just knowing everything from A to Z going into it helps them helps right. them to become much more right. successful. And you don't have to learn it when you just had a baby. Exactly. They're, you don't feel that rushed. That whole element, yeah. exactly, is taken out. So- if they have the knowledge and it's the correct knowledge, I used to teach prenatal breastfeeding classes at the 92nd Street Y, mm -hmm. and the classes were always packed. I had couples there. I had singles. It didn't It right. didn't matter. Some came alone, same, some came with partner. But half the time, the partner would be the one that would retain more, <laughs> most right. of the information and notes, be able to be like, remember, yeah. she said this. Yeah. So they're taking their notes. Then at least you, you can go into it knowing, for example, what the expectations are. And I talk about everything from the entire labor and delivery experience right. all the way through postpartum and weaning. But at least they have a sense going into it of what to expect. If they don't get around to doing that, then obviously calling as soon as they can. Are, there, are there options for that to get that information without having a, a personal lactation consultant? Like, are there good books? Are there good websites? Are there good seminars, YouTubes? Like, What, what can people do if they don't have the time or the wherewithal or the money yeah. or whatever. What, sure. what, what resources are available? Again, while they're pregnant, just to read about it or learn about it. Sure. I mean, one of the sort of the go-to websites that mm -hmm. I love is um, kellymom.com. Kelly with a K? Yes. Okay. Um, and uh, Kelly Bunyata is a uh, an IBCLC as well. And she's sort of the go-to even for LCs to be like, is there new updated information? Right. It's sort of it's just a very comprehensive website. Okay. Kellymom.com. Kellymom.com. Okay. K-E-L-L-Y-M-O-M.com. I have a series mm -hmm. of, you know, about 50 videos on every single aspect on howcast.com that they're two minute long videos that talk about every single topic. Right. So, so people can just like it's Google or you YouTube just, or exactly, find you yeah. under your name. I know, okay. Again, I'm so not techie that yeah. I don't have <laughs> them all in one place. But right. yeah, so they're, they're there. If people are physically picking up books these days, I mean, there are so many breastfeeding books out there. You've seen them during pregnancy or you've spoken to them during pregnancy and now they've had the baby. So then when are you being involved? Let's so, say. so as a lactation oh, consultant, yeah, not a, as a labor like, nurse. So if I'm, so not, if as I'm a labor not seeing nurse. them within yeah. the 30 seconds that I yeah. can latch the baby on, um, if they've been been organized enough and have gotten in touch beforehand and and prepared then they'll call me usually right after they deliver saying okay i'm going home on such and such day it used to be they've called me to come into the hospital now you know visitors right. can't it's so so tricky we're going to take covid out of the equation COVID, for now okay, yeah taking covid out yeah. um sometimes they if they can't see somebody in the hospital maybe sometimes there's not an lc on they'll call me but usually it's within the first couple of days after they come home do you find that it happens frequently that the nurses or the lactation consultants at hospitals like messings up for you where you're like, oh, they taught you all wrong or is it nor or does people or do people do it similarly? You find that it's helpful. The problem is, is that they're too rushed. So they have a laundry list of people that they have to see. They sort of organize it according to who's being discharged first and right. you sort of get them out. But they're not spending an hour and a half with them. They, right. They're checking to see if everything's okay and they can chart that everything's okay. But there's not a lot of time spent 
it's not really the LCs that are messing things up. Sometimes if they can't see an LC and it's the nurse who actually hasn't had any formal training, that is when I have to sort of undo things. Mm -hmm. And it's actually funny because one of my sort of projects right now being new on labor and delivery in a nurse residency program, we had to create a project and the project is actually educating, there are four of us that are working on it, actually educating nurses on labor and delivery to be able to sort of disseminate the proper information and to be able to work with them on the latch and all that kind of stuff so that they go upstairs to postpartum already in a good place. Because with so many different stories, I mean, you might get a nurse that is older. There have been some I've walked in on and I'm like, oh no, don't tell them to do this like with the latch. And I kind of wait and then I kind of fix it. But there are nurses that have come from completely different backgrounds where maybe this is what they learned, but it's kind of not the right way. And it is going to make a little bit of a mess for me upon their return home. So this is when I get those phone calls saying, well, I did what the nurse told me to do, but right. now my nipple's angling this way or <laughs> you right. know, whatever the issues are. I have, to, I have to fix a little bit. In that, when you said it's like 80-20, you know, yes. 80, is in the 20% where we're talking like technical things, yeah. what, what are the common things, just so women get a, a sure. flavor of what, what types of things might be difficult for them or things they're doing it and technique helps. So what kind of things do you address with them or, you know, help them work with? So the majority of the time, like the, the technical stuff is usually the actual latch. Mm -hmm. and half the time, it's really how they're just holding the baby and positioning. Mm -hmm. Half the time, you know, we want the baby up at the breast mm -hmm. so that they're not sort of hunching over them. We want mom sitting up straight, comfortable, pillow on her lap, a boppy, a my breast mm -hmm. friend, pillow, whatever it is. The baby's right there so they can't fall anywhere. I want her hand properly positioned. If she's in a cross cradle position, I want her coming around and holding her breast in a U to make a little sandwich. If she's right. in a football hold, I want the breast in a C. There are like these tiny little tweaks to things. They're so small, yet they make the biggest difference. And so the latch, the positioning, those are all such small things that that take 10 minutes for me to teach some, right. like even other nurses, just to right. be able to teach their patients. Then we avoid sore nipples. We avoid right. we avoid so many different, so many different issues. So technically. The, those are the things that we can work on. I mean, milk supply wise, we, if we have a mom whose baby is in the NICU and she can't directly breastfeed the baby, let's talk, talk about proper pumping technique. Let's talk about do not turn that suction up highest suction, highest right. speed, because your body knows it's not the baby and that right. it's going to shut down and sort of diminish your milk supply. There are all these like these small things, but this is again goes back to why I love the prenatal breastfeeding class because then we can teach them all that beforehand. Right. Things come yeah. up. Right. If they if the mom had the yeast infection during vaginal delivery, yeah, we might end up with a baby with thrush and you know, but we'll see this weeks down the road. If a mom has unrelieved engorgement, it might turn into a mastitis, but we can avoid that. If if a mom is having recurrent plug ducts, there are things that we can do to sort of avoid right. that. So it really is just 20%. If if we can teach them everything to start with, we can kind of avoid that. But things do come up. And how often do you have to interact with maybe her doctor? Like you say, okay, there's an infection and you obviously you're not prescribing. So do you speak to her doctor directly or do you say, tell your doctor I said A, B, and C? How does that normally work? Really depends. But a lot of the times, a lot of my referrals to a lot of patients, they'll come from, for example, OBs or pediatricians that right. I already know. They trust me. And so a lot of the times they'll say, oh, so if you want, I can call so-and-so. But they, they, a lot of times they'll say, no, 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 I'll just call. So what is it that exactly what I'm asking for? I'll tell them exactly what we're asking for. And I can't remember the last time I got a phone call from an OB saying, wait, what are you doing? Like, what is this? They know me. They trust me. Right. They know exactly. As the they, we're very thankful. <laughs> no, because I think that it's, it's, you know, we're not there with them. Right. And so it's number one, you obviously have more experience in this than I would. The only time I could even think that maybe it'd be an issue is if does she have an infection, does she not have an infection, right. which is hard sometimes right. to know. Okay, fine, whatever. But any two people could disagree over that because I get called sometimes either directly by a lactation consultant or, right. you know, through the patient or, right. you know, ever. And I'll be like, 
Okay, great. And I'll say, like, do you have those symptoms? Yes. All right, let's right. do it. That is interesting. And yeah, I guess that makes sense that you get a lot of referrals from the obese infusion. Of course, you, as you are the lactation consultant to the stars, <laughs> it's not a, it's not a, a, a HIPAA violation because I was told that you know from Melka that you were hers. <laughs> I was. She's she's also you know doing the podcast on on breastfeeding. And that's how we got connected. Melka's like, oh, you two have to talk. It's so funny. I know, and I'm always very quiet. Like if she said it and she brought it up, then yeah, great. Yeah, no, you know, I, usually people are like, how do you know her? I'm like, oh, we've been friends for years. Oh, there's definitely, yeah, there's definitely lactation consultant confidentiality <laughs> that exists. But she's uh, the biggest star. I mean, you know, Melka, I love Melka, it. yeah, she's, uh, yeah, she is absolutely. When do you stop working with them? You said you're all the way till they're till they wean until they don't need me anymore. So there are some that ride right into the next pregnancy. Sometimes I've seen somebody once and then they don't mm. need it again. Right. But for the most part, I develop true relationships with all of my clients. And I remember everybody. It's right. been 17 years. You know, sometimes I'm shocked that I forget right. that they're, wait, how is this kid 16 now? Right. Wait, they're still stuck in my I, mind I as have, a newborn. I'm sure the same, same thing for you. It's, it's like, terrifying. What do you yeah. mean? I was <laughs> Did saying, I like, just deliver you? Yeah, I'd be, I'd be like, wait, it's not the fourth birthday. They're like, they're like, no, he's 17. <laughs> yes, it's like, so oh, crazy. Yeah, seems, like, seems like just recently. It I'm does. not sure. You yeah. get, they get stuck in your head. I'll typically, as often as they need me until mm-hmm. they've weaned, they'll call and then they'll start up again with the next baby. Thanks for listening to our podcast today. Look out for our second podcast with Melissa on Wednesday this week, where we will discuss how she advises women who might not want to breastfeed. We also discuss myths about breastfeeding, Melissa's tips for women who plan to breastfeed, and her deep love of poop. Have a great day. We'll see you Wednesday. Thank you for listening to the Healthful Woman Podcast. To learn more about our podcast, please visit our website at www.healthfulwoman.com. That's H-E-A-L-T-H-F-U-L-W-O-M-A-N.com. If you have any questions about this podcast or any other topic you would like us to address, please feel free to email us at hw at healthfulwoman.com. Have a great day. The information discussed in Healthful Woman is intended for educational uses only. It does not replace medical care from your physician. Healthful Woman is meant to expand your knowledge of women's health and does not replace ongoing care from your regular physician or gynecologist. We encourage you to speak with your doctor about specific diagnoses and treatment options for an effective treatment plan.